So in terms of um, a lot of the, the evidence around exercise, just like you talk about, you get that, that high from taking drugs. There's obviously a lot of research about, you know, that ser- serotonin and dopamine effect of exercise and, and the feel good response we get from that. I was recently listening to a podcast and they were talking about, um, I guess, how running to some extent is a good thing. But then, you know, people like yourselves who might have that addictive personality, it can almost come to that point where it impacts you mentally. And I think I was listening to the podcast you did recently, the To Be Human podcast, um, and you were talking about, you know, where where's the point where running or extremes of physical activity or exercise become detrimental as opposed to healthy? Um, and I think Ned was someone that I looked at recently and kind of got a bit of inspiration from because we hear a lot about Goggins, don't we? And his mentality is, you know, going 110% every day, every minute. He talks about those, um, you know, um, rest stations, you know, where you're sitting in a car, like a mental aid station kind of thing. And that's the only time you have to, to rejuvenate yourself, but you've got to be pushing hard day in, day out. But I think that can also become a little bit of a, a toxic kind of mentality to have. And Ned was talking about how, you know, coming into the run, he had a lot of injuries. So he almost found that resting coming into the run was going to benefit him more than the training he was doing. Um, and I've been hearing a lot of, a lot about sh- running streaks lately. Have you heard much about that? Yeah, yeah. People go on run streaks. They don't really last too long, but they're yeah. all the, the weekend warriors that head out there. I think just having a good consistent plan and, and giving yourself rest days, like yeah. no one's no one's superhuman. You're yeah. not going to be able to run a marathon every day for the rest of your life. Um, and you need to be able to adapt to it. Like your body will adapt to some point, but it's like if it's causing pain, if it's going to cause injury, overuse, or if it's um, detrimental to your relationships, your work, obviously it's an unhealthy habit to adopt. Um, if you're just impacting other areas of your life, whether or not just be physical health, but your relationships, your partner, um, if you're just going out and running and not rocking up to work, obviously that's a detrimental thing. <laughs> so like the same thing as um, addi- any sort of addiction. Yeah. It's going to impact other areas of your life, obviously your health, your relationships, your work, your career, then and maybe not healthy. But if you can find a happy balance of exercise and you do want to push limits, you can still still run far, but obviously you got to rest and you got to sleep. Like Goggins doesn't have Strava, so I don't know what he does, but what um up on him. What's your run streak? Have you ever tried to, you know, commit to achieving a certain number of days? Or I guess the, the run itself from Perth to Sydney was a big enough run streak in itself. But like in terms of just purely the run streak rather than the, than the journey or the distance? Yeah, no, I haven't really, really done it. I just sort of like just coming up with a plan. I like to do everything. Like I lift weights, um, I cycle every now and again, bought a surf ski. So I don't like doing just one thing. Now after coming back, but yeah, probably maybe seventy something days was a, my longest run streak when I yeah. did that. But in the two year build up, I think my coach tried a running coach for those um like a year and a half of it, and I only missed four runs that he um programmed in to my training, and there was a lot of big runs in there, and you're running through winter, you run through rain, so um that was sort of I think that's better than a run streak. Um, the discipline of hitting every run apart from four of them, whether I don't know it was due to maybe um, injury or sickness or whatever it was. But I think this consistency of um, someone putting something in there for you and it's like, okay, I'm running 21K today, it's pissing down rain. Um, the discipline to go out is is a good achievement. Um, my run streak is probably not as big as a lot of other people's. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, there's a guy in from Britain, Ron Hill, um, like an old British runner and clothing manufacturer who ran every day for 52 years he even left hospital when he was diseased to go for a two kilometer run for 52 <laughs> years. So that's that, like, that's insane. But I like, sometimes you wonder like, you know, whether, when, when this kind of thing becomes almost an addiction that's unhealthy, just like a drug addiction to some extent, obviously exercise, not the same as taking illicit drugs, but I think, I think there comes a time where you got to draw the line, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a. I think, yeah, anything in, if you're abusing or if you're, yeah, running every day 52 years, like I love running, but <laughs> I'm not going to run every day for 52 years. Um, But he's only running 2K a day, so it's not that far anyway. Well, aerobic exercise, you know, it activates the body's stress response, the HPA axis system. Um, and many people engage in running because they think it's going to, it's going to relax them. Um, 
and give those those positive effects but to some extent there's also a contradiction and we, we just talked about that distinction between you know good stress versus bad stress obviously the physiological um the psychological stress in turn gives us um our body's ability to adapt to overcome that stimulus when when we're training but i think we also need appropriate time to to recover and um, I think that's something that people are learning a lot more about in terms of the run you did from Perth to Sydney. Was there any particular like recovery strategies that you adopted throughout the run in that, in that kind of stream of thinking about recovering, recovering from the run and, re- and recovery strategies that you kind of adopted to, you know, ensure that you were able to get up each day and, and fulfill the, the journey and the, the distance you were covering? Yeah, my um, recovery protocol has always been terrible. I never used to stretch or anything like that. But um, I had um, compression boots, which I used probably like about 10 times over the run. But just general stretching, um, high-protein diet, um, or what, what protein you get in. Um, and just, yeah, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water. That was sort of my main things, protein, sleep, and and water and a little bit of um, body work, like stretching and foam rolling and stuff like that. But there was no um, – I didn't have a set – routine i sort of just <laughs> out there running just blind really just yeah. make it up as i went so was it like the, those recovery boots were they like the norma tech kind of um cold compression boots yeah 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 i was actually thinking about buying a pair of those are they do they do you find they have much benefit or do you think it's a more anecdotal i think it's anecdotal yeah i'm not i haven't i haven't really used them enough like my legs were sore and the next day they were still sore so it's like will they be any worse if i didn't wear them or um i don't, I don't really know more of a placebo effect potentially yeah i think yeah. it's elevated to 11 if it's placebo then it's worth getting but like i was listening to a podcast the the running channel podcast during the week um they were talking a bit about how you overcome those really mentally demanding kilometers and this is really pertinent for me when i was doing the new run marathon recently it was really funny because my airpods like i think airpods are notorious for their their battery life after a while um any like apple devices to some extent (laughs) but my airpods i think they had about they have about four and a half hours battery life at the moment but i was i got that far into the run and then the last two kilometers my airpods died so that last couple of kilometers it was just me without my music um and just in my mind you know and the the way you kind of get yourself through those more demanding kilometers or miles and one of the things they were talking about was habit stacking so kind of pairing something that you enjoy with something that you might find difficult so for instance you know listening to a podcast while you're running so listening to the normalist podcast while you're running or (laughs) listening to your favorite tunes or music while you're running can be a way to counteract that. Is there anything that you, obviously your tunes, you only had a limited number because of the reception. Um, but is there anything in, in training maybe that you've utilized to help you overcome those harder days when you you might be feeling a little bit more sore, a little bit more legs are feeling a little bit heavy. You know, what have you used to overcome those, those kind of moments or those days? Um yeah, I sort of just what I did was think about my whole life and think about everything that um yeah. across the run um was a great reflection of my whole life and all the cool experiences I've had and you're sort of running there and you're like I remember I was in Central America and with my mate and this happened I found a monkey and all yeah. that kind of stuff like you're just thinking about those memories I think was the biggest thing for me because after a while like music you listen to one song you listen to every um, all songs like there's no sort of set songs that sort of lift you up or um like podcasts podcasts are great but you sort of just like listen to people talk obviously it's a good thing that you can um, distract yourself as well but i think yeah it's just sort of when i was out there i think the memories sort of were like this is going to be so good when i um i finish and like um thought about just all the things i've done in my life all the cool things obviously and all the not so good things in my life and i feel like that was sort of like a good reflection where it just sort of fueled me and kept me kept me going Yep. And I think it's, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? When you think about the people you love or the people that have believed in you, all those kind of things, but it's also, I think Ned was talking about how he had like a bit of a fuck you all for everyone that doubted him. And I think it was one of those um, stories that was kind of um, similar with the, the boomerang loop boys, which also did a run for mindful Oz, um, which I had on the podcast. And they were talking about how they got, 
basically declined by a whole host of um, experts that you know said that wrote them off, said they couldn't do the ride around Australia that they intended to do. Was there any element of that? You know, people riding you off, and you had that bit of chip on your shoulder to prove them wrong. Uh, no, I don't really give a fuck. I don't listen to any of that. <laughs> I knew I could do it. Um, but you're going to get people that protect their own insecurities on on you. Obviously, if you're doing this big thing and they don't think they can do it, why would they think you can do it? But um, there's probably people out there that want to see me fail. And there's a lot of people out that want to see me succeed. And um, and you get that with anything. Like you get sports, yeah. sporting stars. You want to see them, like people would want to see them get injured or their team lose. And when someone's doing a big thing, it's it's you definitely get people that are going to try and bring you down. But I never had like a fuck you wall or anything like that. I was just like, just out there, just enjoying it. Yeah. I think that's a good way to be, to be honest. 